In an airport in Istanbul, people are weirded out when they see Logar walk by while looking like a bad sci-fi villain. He meets with his strange-looking assistant and they start planning their next evil plot. Meanwhile in town, carpet seller Arif is settling down with his wife Cheku, who used to be an alien princess. She's already pregnant and Arif imagines their kid will look just like him someday. Cheku wants the kid to visit her home planet when he's born, but Arif has sold off her spaceship for quick money and now he'll have to buy it back. Unfortunately the scrap dealer is gone, but Arif finds a medicine dealer and buys some naughty blue medicine instead. At that moment, Arif sees suspicious people entering his store so he rushes back to discover his arch nemesis Logar is back. Ready to fight, Arif activates his ability and floats in the air, only to be interrupted by a neighbor. After Arif kicks the man out, he's shocked to hear Logar has come to apologize for all his evil deeds, and Arif forgives him because Logar is offering his own spaceship. After having lunch with Cheku, Logar takes Arif to an old factory outside the city, only to knock him out with a very bright light. When Arif wakes up, he finds himself captured inside a machine and discovers there's no spaceship, this was Logar's plan all along to steal Cheku from him. Then Logar proceeds to wear Arif's clothes, cut his hair, put on a fake mustache, and use a device to change his voice, that way Cheku won't know he isn't the real Arif. Then Logar activates the weird machine, which starts spinning and sends Arif 1 million years back in time. At first Arif isn't too bothered about being in the Cretaceous period and tries calling his wife, but the signal is bad and connects him to a shop instead. Arif begins walking around to find a better signal but freezes when he suddenly finds a bunch of dinosaurs and finally realizes the seriousness of the situation. As he wanders around without knowing what to do, Arif finds three apes and decides to educate them, hoping they'll evolve and eventually build something that will send him back to the present. Days begin to pass and Arif tries his best to be a good teacher, but it isn't very effective. Eventually winter comes and Arif's pee instantly freezes every time so he makes a decoration with the resulting ice. By the time spring comes, he's grown a big beard, but he makes a razor with some sticks to cut it off. Unfortunately the apes still don't show any signs of progress, so Arif leaves them behind to find a real civilization. As soon as he leaves, a black monolith falls from the sky and lands near the apes as a nod to Space Odyssey. Meanwhile Arif crosses the forest in search of water while ignoring any creatures he comes across. However he soon bumps into a T-Rex who roars at him. Arif tries to improvise a slingshot but stops himself when he realizes the dinosaur is just a mother protecting her eggs. Thinking about his own future kid, Arif accepts to back away, and the T-Rex thanks him by dropping a huge honeycomb for him. Arif happily eats the honey until he discovers that the bees here are huge. A bee immediately stings him and begins chasing him, so he hides behind a tree. When he looks up, he sees some cavemen who shoot a tranquilizer at him to knock him out. Sometime later, Arif wakes up in a cave surrounded by many cavemen in the middle of a ritual. The leader Demi and his daughter Mimi think Arif may be a spy sent by a tribe known as the Erogens and want him gone, so Arif tries to explain he comes from the future. Their conversation is interrupted by the arrival of a group of Erogens led by Crow, who have been oppressing Demi's tribe for years. Every time they visit, they take the villagers' food and tools, and Crow torments them as he reminds them it's forbidden to draw, make fire, or invent things. This time Crow also chooses three men for a special ritual and one of them is Arif, who refuses to go. As he struggles, the Erogens knock him out with another tranquilizer. Moments later the Erogens are dragging the new prisoners back to their village when Stony accidentally hits his head on a rock and falls from his horse, which causes him to break his arm. Crow assumes Stony won't recover and is ready to bury him, but Arif immediately cuts in and teaches them how to make a makeshift cast for the broken arm. Stony is very grateful, but Arif is still sent back to walk with the prisoners. When they make it to the village, Stony meets with his father Kaya, the leader of the Erogens and Crow's nephew. Kaya is angry because he found a handmade mask in Stony's room and scolds him for having interests like drawing and dancing when he should be training to be a warrior. After sending Stony to torture slaves, Kaya and Crow discuss the construction of a tower that will touch the sky. A picture on the cave shows a spaceship visiting the caveman and the men remember the day it happened. Some years ago, a strange metal contraption fell from the sky and two mysterious men came out of it. They gave Sandy a ball as a gift and because of the famine, the only thing Sandy could gift them in return was manure. Disgusted, the strangers immediately went back to their metal can and left, but when Sandy ran toward them, the spaceship's engine burned him to death. Since then, Kaya has been against technology and new inventions. He also believes that his father is in heaven, and that's why they're building the tower. Moments later, it's announced that the three men they brought from the village must climb the tower to find Sandy. Nobody has survived this test yet, but whoever does will be considered a hero. To everyone's surprise, Arif volunteers to go first, saying it's easy. He slowly climbs the tower, almost falling a few times but always recovering quickly, and eventually he reaches the top. There's a strange man there saying that life is meaningless, and when Arif gets closer, the guy falls off. 
he manages to hold onto the edge and RF offers him a cigarette to help him relax, but when the guy tries to grab it, he falls for good this time. Afterward RF descends the tower and shocks everyone by returning alive. When they ask about Sandy, the body finally hits the ground, but it's just a random worker. Kaya is upset and orders everyone to make the tower higher while Crow tells Arif he's allowed to eat and drink all he wants now. Then Stoney asks if he can paint Arif's picture on a stone because he's impressed by his heroism, and Arif gets to see Stoney's secret collection. He tells him to sign his work so historians will finally know who made them. He also learns that Stoney is in love with Mimi and even got a tattoo of her, but their love is forbidden because she's from another tribe. To make Stoney feel better, Arif plays a romantic song on his phone, but this only reminds him of his own wife. Arif begs Stoney to help get all the tools and gadgets that Kaya has confiscated and in return, he'll help him get together with Mimi. In the evening while everyone is having a feast, Stoney and Arif sneak into a secret cave where Kaya hides all the tools. There are all sorts of things there like a VHS player, but unfortunately their search is interrupted by Crow, who immediately takes them to see Kaya. Arif says they just were there to add his phone to the collection and the excuse saves them from punishment, but then Kaya announces it's time for Stoney to start a family. Kaya's already found a woman for his son, but Stoney is disgusted by her and refuses to marry her, so he decides to abandon the village. Furious, Kaya also kicks Arif out for defending his son. Arif and Stoney travel together for a while until they find Mimi and her friends bathing in a river. With some tips from Arif on how to talk to women, Stoney approaches Mimi and gives her flowers, but she hits him because he's the enemy. Arif cuts in and shows Mimi the tattoo, but since Mimi still isn't impressed, Arif offers to carry all the women's furs instead. As they make their way to the village, Mimi and Stoney get to talk and Stoney impresses everyone by playing the flute. When they arrive at the village, Stoney shows his loyalty to Demi and Arif convinces them to let them stay by saying he'll build a new civilization together with no prohibitions. Then Arif offers a speech that also gets him the support from the whole village. Since Arif says they don't have to hide art, Mimi and Stoney take the kids to paint on the walls and bond in the process while Arif teaches the men how to use the razor. In the evening, Arif and Stoney go back to the cave. Their tree costumes are noticed by the young guard, but Arif distracts him by giving him a chore and now they can enter the cave to steal everything. The next morning, they come back to the village with a cartwheel full of gadgets. For the following weeks, Arif teaches the villagers all kinds of inventions and how to be properly civilized. There's a machine to make flour, lessons on cooking and making traps, building an oven and a water canal, a school for children, pottery, and even instruments and decorations. As days pass, Mimi and Stoney also keep growing closer. Eventually the village becomes a beautiful place and they officially found it with a water fountain. However Arif gets frustrated because it's still not advancing fast enough to build a time machine, so a villager calms him down by sharing some newly invented alcohol. One night during a party, Arif shares some mints with the others, but when he grabs one for himself he accidentally takes naughty blue medicine instead. Arif tries to keep himself distracted to avoid cheating on Cheku, but even funny vegetables remind him of what he's missing. Desperate for relief, he ends up spending the night with an ape. The next day, Crow arrives for the usual inspection and is shocked to see all the new inventions so he shoots a dart at Arif, but Stoney simply sucks the poison out of the wound and then Arif humiliates Crow in front of everyone. A furious Crow leaves, but he promises to come back with an army. Sometime later, Arif, Stoney, Mimi and the kids go out for a picnic, but when they return they discover the erosions have raided the village and burned down anything left. Everyone is tired of the erosions and they decide to fight, so Arif thinks back to the most violent thing he's gone through, meeting angry soccer hooligans. This gives him an idea to avoid war. Arif goes to see Kaya and offers to have a six-man soccer match to solve their feud, thinking he'd have the upper hand in a modern activity. If Arif's team wins, Kaya will have to return all the stolen things and not bother them anymore. If Kaya's team wins Arif will finish the tower himself. Kaya accepts the deal and then shocks Arif by revealing the Erogens have been playing ball games since Sandy disappeared to honor his memory and he has six amazing players, including a rather fierce one that they keep in a cage. A disappointed Arif returns to the village and learns nobody knows how to play soccer except Kohara, but the old man refuses to play since he conceded eight goals in one match. Demi decides he'll be the goalkeeper, and Arif puts Mimi in charge of the uniforms. He and Stoney will be the forward strikers, and three random villagers are chosen to fill the team. That afternoon Arif starts training the new team for long hours, transforming them from clumsy cavemen into actual players that can kick the ball exactly where they want. Arif also teaches the rest of the village how to sing supporting chants. Soon the big day arrives, and the Erogens send a witch to make their goal smaller. Big Flames announce the beginning of the match and it only takes the Erogens a few seconds to overpower Arif's team, quickly scoring a few goals. They also play very dirty, but the referee is Crow and he favors his own men. Suddenly the enemy makes a mistake that allows a player from Arif's team to score a goal, 
bringing back hope but also accidentally falling into a lava hole. During halftime, Arif reveals that in the past he swore an oath with an alien that gave him superpowers, they just need to break bread on top of his head to activate them. When the second half begins, Arif uses his powers to the fullest and dominates the game, soon reaching a score of 9 to 9. They only need one more goal to win, but when they're about to score it, a pterodactyl suddenly grabs one of their players and flies away with him. The opposite team makes fun of them for this and an angry Stony tries to confront them, which results in an unfair penalty. Luckily Demi catches the ball but his hands get seriously injured in the process, so he can't play anymore. Since the team needs a goalkeeper, Kohara has no choice but to accept to play, proving that he hasn't lost his skill by catching every ball thrown his way. With only a few seconds left, Ara floats in the air with the ball and kicks it with confidence to score the goal that grants them victory. As the whole village celebrates, Mimi and Stone kiss. Kaya claps and admits they were impressive warriors, even his son, so he keeps his deal and will leave them alone. They may have won but Arif is still sad because he's lost so much time with this that by now Logar has probably captured his wife already. He decides he has to leave and travel the land, but first he gives his watch to Stoney and his wedding ring to Mimi, asking them to paint his portrait on the caves. Suddenly, a bright light appears and reveals Cheku, who has traveled through time to find her love. She explains that everyone around the world is talking about Arif because they've found his messages and his portrait on caves and rocks, not to mention the ring, and all this has been driving historians crazy. Cheku did lots of research and understood what happened to her husband, so when Logar finally came for her, she immediately threatened him with a gun and made him confess everything. It was his machine that brought her here. A very happy Arif takes the ring back from Mimi and finally says goodbye to the caveman before returning to the present. After the couple disappears, Logar appears in their place only to quickly be eaten by a T-Rex.